Okay. Probably one of the least enjoyable aspects of units is converting one unit to another system. Uh, this gets very confusing. In fact, it gets quite tedious. And it's something that I don't have you do a lot of on tests. I like conversions and homework because it's good practice to be able to convert from one to another. But because it tends to be a little bit confusing, I try to keep away from it with the tests. Now, conversions are basically going, usually going from one system of units to another. If you're converting within the metric system, it's usually very easy. You're just changing the metric prefix, so you're changing some power of 10. But when you're going from, let's say, the US customary system to the metric system, you know, we've got to be a little bit careful here. Now, here's a very good example. When we want to convert, we take an original figure, 15 inches, okay? That's part of the US customary system. And we multiply it by a fraction which is actually equal to 1, 1 to 1. Now, this doesn't look like 1, but in fact it is. 2.54 centimeters is equal to 1 inch. So, in effect, this conversion factor is really multiplying something by 1. Anytime you multiply something by 1, you get the same amount back. But what this does is it changes the units. Okay? So, to create my conversion fraction, what I need to do is say, what am I converting into? You know, usually that ends up on the numerator, but that can be in the denominator also. What am I changing into? Okay? And what do I wish to get rid of? I want to change inches into centimeters and get rid of the inches. So, by multiplying by this conversion factor, 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch. I turn that into a fraction. My inches divided by inches cancel out. So that's eliminated. I'm left with centimeters. Okay? So 2.54 times 15, I get 3.81 centimeters. So conversion factors, yes, they can be, they can get uh, confusing. But as you can see, the process is actually quite simple. You're going to multiply some quantity by a conversion factor that comes from, you know, some equation. And then you can get your new result. Because after all, 15 inches is 38.1 centimeters. They're the same thing. They're the same length. What's different is I have calibrated that particular figure to inches, whereas this is calibrated to centimeters. U.S. customary, metric, but they're the same value, same length. Let's do another example. On the Garden State Parkway, a car is traveling at a speed of 38 meters per second. Okay, this is using SI units, meters and seconds. Those are the SI units for speed. Is a driver exceeding the speed limit? Okay, so we want to convert an SI speed. We want to convert that into a US customary unit, miles per hour, that we typically see on the uh, posted speed limit sign. Now, again, we're going to use a 1 to do this conversion and we're going to have to decide what do we need to multiply by or what do we need to divide by. You know, that fraction is really multiplying in the numerator, dividing in the denominator. Okay, so we're going to begin with our conversion. Okay, I should, what we want to convert from. We have our SI unit here and we're going to multiply it by 1, which is soon going to become a fraction. Well, we know that one mile is 1609 meters, okay? So one mile is 1609 meters. I want to get rid of the meter, and we're doing miles per hour, put miles in there. So I'm going to multiply by this fraction right here, okay? But what that does is, instead of giving me um, miles per hour, it's going to give me miles per second. I don't want that. So, I need to do another conversion after I do this conversion. Again, 2.36 times 10 to the minus 2 
miles per second or 0.236 miles per second. It's not going to help me read my speed limit sign. So I have seconds in there. I got to convert that to hours because it's miles per hour. So I come up with an equivalent between seconds and hours. Okay? Now, I'm going to multiply it again. There's 60 seconds in a minute. Okay? 60 minutes in an hour. 60 times 60 is 3,600. So 3,600 seconds per hour. Okay? So at miles per second. I want to get the seconds out of the denominator. So I multiply it by something with seconds in the numerator. Numerator, denominator, they're going to cancel out. It's per hour, so per hour puts the hours in the denominator. So in this case, yes, hours are going to be in the denominator. So again, I do the conversion right here, and I see that I end up with 85 miles per hour. And if you know the Garden State Parkway, the parkway there's no place on the parkway, which is anywhere close to 85 miles per hour, okay? So obviously, they are speeding, okay? Let's say that that was supposed to be, I don't know, in some places it's 65. They're going at least 20 miles per hour over. So again, in conversions, you always want to know, what am I converting from, what am I converting into, all right? And be able to eliminate those quantities that you want to get rid of, and introduce those quantities that you want to convert to. Again, 55 miles per hour, I can convert that to meters per second. Why? Because I know there's one meter per second every 2.23 miles per hour. I can look that up. I turn that into a fraction. Um, again, you know, it's going to be one meter per second over 2.2 uh, miles per hour. The miles per hour divided by the miles per hour cancels out, and I have one over one over meter per second, which is the inverse of the inverse gives me back what I started out with, 25 meters per second. Convert the other way, 10 meters per second, multiply by this conversion factor, and go to 22 miles per hour. So a lot of times what you're doing is you're dividing by a conversion factor and multiplying it by a conversion factor to go to one system of units to another. Uh, here's some more. Later on, when we do forces, we're going to be converting uh, between pounds and newtons. Okay, some people mistakenly think that kilograms and, and newtons are, you know, the same type of unit. Kilograms are mass. Okay, the U.S. customary unit for mass, by the way, is the slug. Nobody uses that. But if you want to convert from pounds to newtons or newtons to pounds, again, conversion factor. 500 newtons, there's 0.2248 pounds per newton. The newtons cancel out, I get pounds. Or go the other way, 180 pounds. Divide that by the conversion factor. Pounds is in the numerator, pounds in the, is in the denominator. So that cancels out the pounds and I'm left with newtons. So again, you know, whenever you're doing a conversion, you want to look at the units that are there. Here's a conversion going from, um, what are we going from, miles per minute. That's, that's an unusual measurement, but we're going to go with it. This is from the textbook. We have one half a mile per minute. Okay? We want to convert that to meters per second. Ah, okay? So we multiply, we have miles per minute. Miles is in green, minute is in blue. We want to get rid of both of them because we want meters per second. So the first thing I do is I multiply this by something that's going to get rid of the, the, the mile. 1609 meters, that's going to be my answer, meters, divided by one mile. This equals this, multiply it by that, it's the equivalent of one, so it's going to convert that for me. But I still want to get rid of the minutes. This is going to be per second, meters per second. So now I multiply by one minute per 60 seconds. And you can see that gives me 13 meters per second. Okay? Uh, another example, here we're going from a density in grams per cubic centimeter. You know, actually, because water is one gram per cubic centimeter, this is actually the specific um, density. 
Again, we've got grams per centimeter cubed. We want to convert it to kilograms per meters cubed. This is from the CGS system. I want to convert it to the SI system. So, very simple. Metric is so simple. There's one kilogram for 1,000 grams. So I multiply these two together. Grams cancel out with grams. All right. So now I want to get rid of the cubic centimeters. That's a little more tricky. A little trickier. More tricky. With cubic centimeters there, I want to convert to cubic meters. There are... Um, there's one centimeter for every uh, hundredth of a meter. Probably could have done this a little bit differently and gone uh, instead 100 centimeters over uh, one meter, but this is the way that they did in the book. But notice I've got a cue ball of this. So 10 to the minus 2 actually becomes, you know how to do exponents, right? When you have an exponent of, an, of something with an exponent, you multiply the exponents together. So 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6. And here's the negative, here's a positive 3 from here. Um, now we just have exponents with the like bases. 10 to the 3 times 10 to the minus 6. Negative 6 plus 3 is going to be negative 3. It's in the denominator. Okay, 1 over 10 to the negative 3 becomes 10 to the 3. And that's how I do my conversion. Okay? So these are some nice examples of converting uh, from one unit to another. And again, look at the examples that are in the textbook. Uh, you also want to look at the, the examples uh, which are here. I should have used an equation editor so it's a little bit more transparent. But play around with some of these and uh, get some experience with converting from one type of unit to another. Again, we do this mostly in the homeworks. You're going to probably need to do this in the laboratory experiments. Um, on the test, there's really minimal uh, conversion of units.